it's time for today's Making Their Case. Is the White House failing to make its case for health care reform? With a public option in danger, no actual bill to sell, has the Obama administration replaced persuasive campaigning with a blame game, pointing fingers at town hall protesters and talk show hosts? Here's what conservative columnist Jonah Goldberg of the National Review Online writes about the White House, quote, lashing out at the town hall protesters playing the race card, whining about angry white men and whispering ominously about right-wing militias is almost always a sign of liberalism's weakness, a failure of the imagination. In addition to the slander, such complaints are monumental incandescently lame coming from a party that controls Washington. Here to react to make their case are Dana Goldstein, associate editor for the liberal magazine The American Prospect, and Amanda Carpenter, reporter and blogger for the conservative newspaper The Washington Times. Uh, Dana, you start. React to um, Jonah Goldberg. Is he right? Uh, no. I mean, I think his statement is pretty ridiculous. It's pretty clear to me who's to blame. Uh, we need health care reform. There's 47 million people without health insurance. What the insurers are doing is they're cashing in their chits with the politicians who campaigns. They've been funding for years. And in the meantime, these politicians are home on congressional recess. They're hearing these lies and misinformation that are, be that are being promulgated on health care, and they're losing their nerve. And that's really what's happening. Speaking of lies and misinformation, Amanda, I want to uh, bring your attention to the NBC News poll of uh, President Obama's health care plan. We asked uh, viewers of both CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News about things that are false. Uh, will the health care reform provide health care for illegal immigrants? That's false, but 72 percent of Fox viewers believed it. Decisions about elderly care. Can the government pull the plug on the elderly? 75 percent, three out of four Fox viewers believe that's in the bill. It's not. Don't conservative media outlets, as well as the rest of us, have a responsibility to inform viewers in a public debate, not misinform them? Well, I don't think anybody's consciously misinforming, but I think the big problem with the health care legislation... You don't believe one three out of four viewers of that David, other network? David, let me finish. The right. big problem with the health care legislation is that it is so big, there's no final version, and nobody knows exactly what's going to be in it. And that naturally leads to some confusion but uh, Amanda, we know what is not in it. There's nothing in it about providing medical care for illegal immigrants. There's nothing there about the government deciding whether to pull the plug on grandma. It's well, not in there. Isn't the responsibility on news organizations across the board to make a determination about what's in it and what's not? Yeah, and I think a number of news organizations have. My colleague at the Washington Times, Jennifer Haberkorn, did a great fact check on our front page today, which I should point out, our news pages are not conservative. They are objective, you know, news things, while our editorial page is conservative. So, you know, I advise people to look at Jennifer Habercorn's great report pointing out, you know, what is in the bill and what's not. She talks about the death panels thing. She talks about the abortion thing. And so I think there are great efforts to clarify this information. But again, it stems from the problem where it's so big, there's no final version. And, you know, people get in there, they find these little clauses and they give them names and label them on the internet and it picks up. And so, you know, of course, everyone in the media has an obligation to clarify that. It just, it, it takes some time. Dana, short of playing defense and coming out and saying, well, these death panels, for example, they're not true. What does the White House need to do, more broadly speaking, to clarify the message so that this misinformation isn't promulgated out there? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I mean, I think the White House just needs to be really direct. Consumers are going to save 20 to 30 percent of their hard-earned income if we pass health reform. You know, we just can't afford to continue on this path. Individual families can't afford it, and we can't afford it as a nation. It's, it's just not tenable. Dana, I want, on the point, though, about the Obama White House, I mean, there has been a lot of criticism that the Obama White House can't even get its strategic message straight. On the one hand, there's Rahm Emanuel saying, oh, we're not going to deal with Republicans, possibly. Then there's Robert Gibbs saying, we're only dealing with, with a bipartisan issue right now. If the White House can't get that message straightened out, isn't there a larger problem that the White House is essentially creating a vacuum, that it's, it's not on offense, it's having to explain things that are not in the bill, it's not explaining what's in the bill, and as a result, there is a vacuum for some conservative media outlets to mislead people if that's what they want to do? Mm -hmm. I think I think you're making a good point, David. I mean, the White House has to get itself together. It has allowed Max Baucus, who is insurer-funded as a politician, and his gang of six to sort of take the lead in this process for far too long. Now we know Republicans don't even support co-ops. That's the compromise position. So you know what? I think it's time for the White House to tell its allies in Congress, let's move forward as a Democratic Party. Let's pass health reform. You know, David, if I can add something, you know, there's a little big push saying Obama hasn't invested enough personal capital in this. I mean, he's done so many town hall meetings. I think that's part of the downfall of this, is that he's put himself out there almost too much, and he's made some missteps talking about how doctors might take kids' tonsils out or amputate a foot on some profit motive. I think that's reduced his credibility on this issue, and they need to rein back and then come back in September with some really good messaging.
Well, I would agree with you there. I mean, the president has been out there, and if, it's, if the message is not getting across, then the message that they're delivering has not been effective. But in any case, Amanda Carpenter and Dana Goldstein, uh, thank you both for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you.